Hey guys, Ann here, coming to you with a quick video. Um, it's not gonna be perfect because I'm super sleep deprived, my eyes are all heavy, and I've been blowing my nose a lot, but the word must get out, right? So, trying not to be vain here. Um, I just learned a cool thing from God, and it's not like fresh learned, like I had known it before, but he really deepened it, and so I'd like to share it with you guys. Um, quick open in prayer. Heavenly uh, Father Yehovah, I give you glory and honor and praise because you are worthy. Thank you so much for teaching me. Um, may it be your words spoken, not mine, for your glory, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. So, like I said, pretty sleep deprived, so bear with me here, guys. Um... I was just writing a message to a friend of mine and we've been talking about scripture and we were really on the same page and then all of a sudden he just like changed. He did like a 180 and dove off the deep end of correct theology and dove off the, dove, was going the direction of, of good theology and then dove off the deep end of the opposite. Like completely changed his thoughts on things and it really bugged me. It bugged me because the new direction he's going is biblically incorrect. I can easily prove it's biblically incorrect and it's dangerous. And he's doing it because his pastor said so. I'm not trying to be mean to pastors. There's some good ones out there, but you should never let a pastor be your primary source of information. And I can prove why with scripture, with the thing God started showing me again. I can prove why with many scriptures. This is just one example. And by the way, person, if you ever watch this video, I don't make these videos to be mean or to share what happened to anyone. That's why I don't say your name. I I share it because, I don't know, it happened at this time and I'm like, okay, well, God, you must need someone else to hear this video at this exact time with this exact topic. Maybe someone else will benefit from this thing that God just taught me. So I really try to share videos in the correct timing in case someone needs to hear it right away. So anyway, um, my friend is born again and he has a heart to follow the Lord. He really does, but he's doing one thing very dangerously wrong. And I'm not saying this to judge him. I've done it wrong. And it nearly cost me my salvation, which is why I'm now very terrified for him. He has thus saith the pastor syndrome, as I nicknamed it. Oh man, guys, I'm so tired. Thus saith the pastor syndrome is, and I have something in my eye. That's annoying. Anyway, thus saith the pastor syndrome is when you believe a pastor's word over the word of God, which is obviously a sin and incorrect. Thus say the pastor syndrome can also happen when you don't know the word of God for yourself and you're relying on someone else to spoon feed you the word of God, which puts you in a very vulnerable, vulnerable position, very easy for the devil to get because then you won't know when your pastor makes a mistake. Again, not judging, I've done this, but the mistakes I made while taking someone else's word for what the Bible said instead of me figuring out what the Bible said almost cost me my soul and unfortunately I think it's going to cost a lot of people their souls so please don't be one of those people you cannot rely on another person for your salvation you can't rely on another person's interpretation for your salvation you are going to stand before God alone just you not your parents not your spouse not your kids not your pastor And you are going to give account for every word spoken, every deed done before God. And yes, there's dozens of scriptures that say that. Even Christians give account for their lives. And God's not going to say, oh, well, your pastor said it was okay, so clearly it's okay. No. God's going to say, doesn't matter if someone said it was okay. It's illegal in my kingdom. You broke the law. Now you have to give account for it. And if you break the law enough, you will not go to heaven. For example, if someone gave me drugs, let's say I didn't know heroin was heroin, and someone gave me heroin and said, hey, carry this across the border for me. Don't worry, it's legal. And I did it because, oh, well, mm, obviously my friend knows. 
Is it still illegal? Yes. Is it maybe slightly a less heinous crime because I wasn't doing it willfully and purposefully? Yes. But is it still illegal? Yes. Am I still going to go to jail if I get caught? Yes. And unlike the police, God is omnipotent and sees everything and he does catch you when you break his law. You know, with the earthly authorities, some people get away with things. With God, nothing goes unseen. And so I was telling this friend, I was just drafting him a message, and my heart is just broken for this friend because I'm like, I'm terrified for his soul. He is following incorrect words from a pastor instead of the Bible's words. And what's happened is that by doing this, he has also opened himself up to a demon. I just say this, it's just the facts. I don't sugarcoat things, guys. Demons are like germs in the spirit world, demons and spirits. And who you hang out with, if they're sick, and you keep opening yourself up to them and welcoming their sickness, you catch their sickness. So he's hanging out with this pastor who's teaching him wrong, and it, you don't always get sick right away, but he keeps opening himself up to it and opening himself up to it. And he's not taking his medicine and his vitamins to fight it off, which is the word of God. The word of God is your food, it's your vitamins, it's your medicine, it's your strength. It's your water. So he's weak. He's not taking care of his himself, spiritually or physically. He is, you know, if we don't take care of our body, we get weak and open to infections. If we don't take care of our soul, we get weak and open to infections. So this friend is not reading the Bible for himself. So he's spiritually weak right now. He's fatigued. He's malnourished spiritually. And so he's open to infections. And so then he's hanging out with this pastor who has this hyper grace counterfeit Holy Spirit demon and he's started to catch it because he's sick and weak. God can help him, but he has to want God's help and he has to start taking care of himself again and reading his Bible again. So read the Bible, do not be spiritually weak. Anyway, I keep pointing down because my Bible is here. I actually have it with me open to show you. Um, so I was just telling this friend, it's just like, this is incorrect. The friend's pastor is all like, oh no, you can't lose your salvation. In fact, Jesus was the only perfect one, so you don't even have to try to be perfect. The blasphemy is beyond my words. Jesus, help me say the words to describe how blasphemous that is. That's the logic of Satan. It's taking something God said and then implying it way beyond what God said. It's adding to the Bible. It's, it's satanic. Jesus is the only perfect one. That's why we need his blood to cover our sins. Yes, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Without Jesus' sacrifice, not a one of us is going to heaven. Not Mother Teresa, not me, not the holiest person in the whole world is going to heaven without the blood of Jesus because even a single sin disqualifies us technically from heaven. We all need Jesus' blood to get to heaven. But it's absolutism to say Jesus' blood gets us all the way to heaven. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus' blood gets us born again and forgives our accidental sins and our repented of sins. Jesus' blood does not forgive willful, continual sin. Every time you sin as a Christian... It's actually more heinous because you know full well now the cost of your sin. Every time you sin, you are keeping the Son of God on that cross, torturing him, blood dripping down his head and back, suffocating, open flesh scraping against the cross, nails tearing deeper holes in his wrists. Every time you sin, you are causing him more suffering. So no, your sin as a Christian, if you willfully continue in it, it can be forgiven if you stop, but if you willfully continue in it, knowing full well the cost, it will disqualify you from heaven. Hebrews chapter 10, go read it. It explains what I just said. Anyway. This just frustrates me. This just, the false teachers of this world frustrate me. They're dragging people to hell and making them feel good about it. They're just like making people happily misled and going to hell 
They think they can have their cake and eat it too. They think they can have their sin and go to heaven. You can't. Jesus' blood was shed so because of sin, you have to get rid of sin. You can't keep partying on in sin and get to heaven. It's not covered. Anyway, forgive me my anger, but I'm pretty sure this is righteous anger from God. Not thus saying the Lord that it is, but I know his heart. I know he hates false teaching because it's taking good, honest people like my friend who really want to follow God and misleading them and taking them to hell if they don't change.